Howdy and welcome to French Cabin Mountain here in central Washington. You know what's up here besides a bunch of trees and beautiful scenery? There's a bunch of green schist and blue schist, which are metamorphic rocks that tell a very specific story about the early days of Washington. Metamorphic rocks today, the Easton Metamorphic Suite, and a couple of key gee whiz things about this particular bedrock unit. Thanks for joining us. Let me give you a shot right off the bat. Let's not screw around. Gizmo's gonna come right over, and we're gonna get a sense of these incredible blocks. And I'll give you some good detailed looks at this stuff in just a second. But as we pan back over and get a sense of the setting, uh, this is a forested region, part of the Wenatchee National Forest. And we're up high in a divide between Lake Cleulum and Lake Cachis, French Cabin Mountain. Uh, there's a Forest Service road coming up here, pretty easy to drive. And if you get to the right spot up here, you can see this blue schist metamorphic rock. The goal today is to help you understand why this is exciting. It's not only a beautiful rock, it also has a very specific story to tell from the Mesozoic era during the age of the dinosaurs when ocean floor was crammed into the oceanic trench off the coast of North America once upon a time. So all along this Forest Service road, there are these amazing blocks, these amazing boulders. And it's not like a glacier moved them. This is outcrop here. This is a place where the blue schist is, is in place. It has not been moved. And yet if we pan over and look carefully at some of the details, we'll get our first real close look at some of this. There's greens, there's some blues. Good looking. That is good looking stuff. Eastern metamorphic sweet. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we are officially excited. Uh, the light is good, and we have some of these surfaces now that are showing up beautifully. So here is the complicated nature and the wonderful colors of the Shuxian, <laughs> the Shuxian green schist. But we'll just go ahead and call it a blue schist. I'll tell you about the difference between green schist and blue schist in just a second. But Liz has some water to spare, and uh, water girl. Yeah, where do you want it? Oh, uh, just kind of on this face, how about? How close can I get? How close can you get? Without falling. Without falling. Oh, oh baby, oh baby. Oh, damn! Sorry, Patrick. Ah, oh, that brings it to life. Just add water. So the details have been studied here. The 
fabric of the rock, meaning the, the swirls, uh, a broader scale fold that's going on here. But in general, there's all sorts of this incredible, rare blue schist metamorphic rock to enjoy in central Washington. <laughs> you gotta get that out of your head. It's so crazy. <laughs> All right, let me come in. Let me come in like a boss. Oh, oh okay. Do you think we can lift it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> you want me to try? No, I don't know. Hi, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, this is just so cool. Are we picking up the greens as well as the blues? Not with the shorts in the backpack, but the rock. Mm. Yeah, nice. So Liz loaned me her hammer and then I left it. So we'll use her for scale. Uh, this area is challenging for many reasons. The terrain is steep and of course there are places in the North Cascades that are much steeper than this. Uh, but not only is the terrain steep, but we also have this incredible vegetative cover here in the Cascades. So if you really are serious about making geologic maps of this area and piecing together this Mesozoic exotic terrain story, uh, this is just a taste of the problems. And you might go, well, that doesn't look like a problem to me. It's a beautiful place, and why wouldn't you spend as much time as possible? And I agree with you. And if, especially if you're under 40, I suppose, you're like, this is a... This is a place to be in my prime, man. But I hope that you can see that even though the scenery is wonderful and there's all sorts of botany to enjoy, I'm hoping to give you the sense that there are just these little postage stamps of exposure. You just don't really get a chance to connect a bunch of these individual exposures easily. I mean, you can do it but it takes many generations of work uh, of all taking all these rare exposures of bedrock and then uh, trying to plot them on a map and then even better than that trying to make sense of of what's going on so i'm just trying to lay the groundwork and then we will look at some specifics i do have some specifics for you here it's often difficult for normal folks like us to tell the difference between blue schist and green schist metamorphic facies. Sometimes it doesn't even have to do with the color of the rock, although I think you've seen that there is some bluish tint to much of this rock. It's a temperature and pressure story. And I had to Google it. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've learned it in the classroom. And I don't teach different phases of metamorphic facies in geology 101 but here we go if we're talking about blue schist rock like we are here we're taking ocean floor we're taking basalt that's igneous right and we're taking that ocean floor and we are cramming it into an oceanic trench and as we shove that ocean floor deeper and deeper into the ocean trench into the subduction zone we increase the pressure while keeping the temperatures relatively low. How high does the pressure get? How low did the temperature remain with this blue schist here at French Cabin Mountain? I got numbers for you. Metamorphic rocks forming at high pressures, about 10 kilobars of pressure, which equates to about 40 kilometers depth. So, 40 kilometers, how many miles is that? I can't do it in my head, I should have looked it up. I don't know, it's more than 20 miles, isn't it? More than 20 miles down into the oceanic subduction zone 
to get the pressures necessary to create the minerals that thrive in those high pressure conditions. All the while, the temperatures remained relatively low, about 300 degrees centigrade. And you're like, well, that doesn't sound very low. Well, compared to many other metamorphic regimes, that is low temperature. So blue schist, which we have here, high pressure, low temperature, metamorphic rock. And the minerals that are thriving in those low temperature, high pressure conditions are minerals that I could not identify easily in a laboratory, but they're here. From the scientific paper that I read on this shucks and green schist and blue schist, we have plenty of glaucophane here that gives the blue color, some epidote, lawsonite, same thing I think, albite, titanite, what? Garnet, heard of it, jadeite, and quartz. So you need to really be up on your metamorphic rocks and your metamorphic minerals to get a sense of what's going on with these rocks. But it's really the regional tectonic consequences, no, it's the regional tectonic configuration that I'd like to share with you before we quit. Hey, I'm on the trail and I forgot Gizmo in the car, but this blue schist stuff continues up the trail. What we're looking at is ocean floor that's 160 million years old, shoved down the ocean trench, turns from green schist into blue schist about 120 million years ago, and then shortly after that gets added to North America. But where? In Mexico? In SoCal? Or in Northern California? Those are your options. Discuss. So you're looking north right now into the French Cabin Creek drainage going down to Lake Kaliellum. You're looking north. And here's our uh, featured metamorphic rock, part of the Eastern Metamorphic Suite. But the last thing I want to do for you is point out that if we go this way, over this ridge, up and over this ridge, can you go thoink over on the other side? That's Lake Easton wrong. That's Lake Kachis and Lake Easton State Park. And the Straight Creek Fault is a perfectly north-south razor-sharp strike-slip fault that behaved, in past tense, behaved like the San Andreas Fault. And so here on both sides of the road is the Easton Metamorphic Rocks. If we go on the other side of this ridge, and therefore the other side of the Straight Creek Fault, we need to go a hundred miles that way, on the other side of the Straight Creek Fault, to find these rocks again. In other words, this Eastern Metamorphic Suite has been offset by a hundred miles, probably 20 feet at a time, each time we had a San Andreas Fault-like earthquake, and that movement is no longer happening. But when the Straight Creek Fault was active between 50 and 35 million years ago, we had major offset of this exotic terrain. Okay, you satisfied? That's a little episode looking at some beautiful metamorphic rocks. But wait, there's one more thing before we quit. And to me, 
it's the most exciting part of this whole thing. This is probably rock that accreted in Mexico, or at least Southern California, and then got sent up here to Washington. So up until this point in the episode, I think you were visualizing stuff coming in, stuff going down the oceanic trench here in Washington. But we know for a variety of reasons, including the context, the geographic location of this spot, and what we know about the Stewart terrain, and the Ingalls terrain, and the Blue Mountains terrain, and the Klamath terrains that are down there. We know that there's a regional story, and work continues to try to piece this together, to try to figure out how far north many of these terrains actually showed up to figure out how far north many of these terrains were moved from their original docking location. Oh, Liz has got a couple samples for the garden. So that's really where I'm gonna to try to continue to work on this. I don't know if I've mentioned it to you yet, but I'm gonna be pretty locked into these exotic terrains uh, for the foreseeable future. So just to make sure we've got it, we're thousands of feet above sea level, and yet we're looking at a 160 million year old ocean floor. Basalt of the Pacific Ocean floor. It's not basalt anymore, it's blue schist now. But if we take that ocean floor, just plain old basalt, cram it into the ocean trench, shove it deep enough so that the pressures skyrocket, but the temperatures remain relatively low, we get a metamorphic rock called blue schist, and then through thrust vaulting, we're gonna cram this stuff on to the edge of North America. Not at present day Washington, but at some point further south, depending on who you talk to. Hey, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I love you. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.